Skylum just announced a release of a brand new photo editing application called Luminar for iPad. It's already available on the App Store and you can download it right now. In this video, first of all, we will go through all the information we already have and then we will move into the application where I show you how it works. Okay, so starting from the beginning, let's talk about what is the Luminar for iPad. Well, by now you already guessed it's a new photo editing application for iPad designed by the same team responsible for Luminar or Aurora HDR software. This new application is designed for on-to-go photographers who want to edit from anywhere using popular Luminar tools. If you're wondering how to get the application, all you need to do is to head to your App Store and search for Luminar for iPad. Once you get it, you can just download it and install it on your iPad and start using it immediately. When it comes to device requirements for the Luminar for iPad application, your device has to run at least the iPad iOS 17 or newer. If you're not sure how to find out your iOS version, simply tap on Settings, then select General and tap on About. Here, the second line should show you your iPad iOS version. If the number is 17 or later, you're good to go. The Luminar for iPad is paid photo editing application. Currently, it comes with three subscription plans where you have the 12 months, 6 months and 1 month plans. Probably the best option is the 12 months plan where you're going to pay around $30, which equals to somewhere around $2.49 per month. To top it off, if you want to try the application, choose this plan and you will get a 7-day trial, which will allow you to test the application and during the 7 days, you can cancel at any time. And finally, before we move into the application, I also want to share with you that I have already started to work on a complete guide for the application, which will include tutorial for every single tool. I will do the complete overview. I will also add to it a video tutorials, and I will also share with you some of my favorite photo editing workflows that you can use in the application. Once it's available, it will be ready on our website, cleverphotographer.com slash forward luminar for iPad. And of course, as usual, we will announce it through our usual social media and newsletter channels. And finally, it's time to move into the application. The first window you're going to see once you install the application is the place where you can create your account or login. It's really up to you what you're going to use. You can use your email or one of the popular platform. And for me, I'm just going to use the Apple option. Once you log in on the next window, you'll be able to choose the subscription. It's up to you what you're going to try, but I would really suggest you to try the yearly subscription with the seven day trial so you can test and try the application. For me, for the time being, I'm just going to tap on skip and we're going to move into the first window of the editing process. When it comes to photo editing in the Luminar for iPad, the editing is really simple. It just follows three steps. You select your image in the photo gallery, then move it into the editing module where you apply all the edits to your photos and then you export the image to share it with the rest of the world. Now coming back to the photo gallery, you will see that it's very similar to your Apple Photos. And the reason is that the application is integrated with the Apple Photos. So pretty much all the photos you have stored there, you can open and edit using the little toolbar on the side. Additionally, you can also edit any images that are stored on your iPad by using the little icon in the bottom right corner, or you can also use a built-in camera app to capture the image directly with your iPad. 
Now, before we move to the editing, let's quickly run through the list of the image formats that you can use to edit in the application. So at this moment, the Luminar for iPad support JPEG, JPEG 2000, PNG, DNG, TIFF, and PSD file formats. So now we know what to do with the photo gallery. So let's simply select one of the images here and move into the editing module. Now, since we are in the editing module, let's talk about the different options you see on the screen. Starting from the top left, the little orange arrow allows you to return into the photo gallery. If you apply certain edits to your image, let's say that I just add a little bit of exposure, then once you click on the arrow, you will be asked if you want to discard the changes, means that it's not going to be saved, or if you want to share it, means export it out of the application and then share it around. After that, we have an option to undo or redo the steps we have applied to the image. And then moving on, we have an option to crop or transform our image. Once we open the crop and transform window, you have a list of options at the bottom of the screen with undo and redo, auto align, rotate your image in 90 degree circle, flip horizontally or vertically. And then there is a list of presets when it comes to cropping. We have a free form where you can crop the image however you like. You can also use one of the presets with one on one square, Instagram, Facebook post and so on. Once you finish with the cropping, you can just click on done in the top right corner and continue. Moving on, the next option next to the crop tool is the erase tool. When you tap on it, it will open in a new window and you will notice at the bottom of your screen, there is a little slider which allows you to adjust the size of your brush. So let's make it a little smaller, then zoom in by pinching on the screen and then very easily just brush over the area you want to remove. And just like that, it erased that specific part. If you make a mistake, you can use the little arrows to undo or redo the step. Once you finish erasing, you can double tap your image to fit it back to the screen and then click on done in the top right corner of the screen. Next to the erase tool, you will see a line with the metadata from the image if it's available. And then we have a little circle with the three dots. When we click on that, that will give us additional options where you can adjust your account. You can switch on or off the sound within the application. You can also easily contact the support, look at the privacy policy, terms of the use, or find out more about the application and about Skylam. Coming back, the next option is the share. When you tap on that, this is where you export and share your image. You have a two options here. You can save the image in your photos by using the save to photos option, or you can tap on share, which will open the familiar share option, very much similar, just like in any other application on Apple devices. So coming back, let's just close the develop tool. And now we're going to turn our attention towards the main editing toolbar. What we're looking at is the view of the editing tools. And right now the application has the following tools available. Simple develop tool, just like you know it, where you can adjust your white balance, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, exposure, contrast, vignette, and saturation and vibrance. When you're using any of these controllers and sliders, when you adjust them, if you want to reset them to the original value, simply double tap on them and they reset. So this is your develop tool. If you want to see the before and after on what you added, you can use the little on and off button in the top right corner of the tool, or you can also simply switch off that effect on your image. Again, we can just double tap to reset it, and then we can tap on the tool to minimize it. Let's go through the list of the tools available. We have the Enhance AI, where you can, with one simple controller, enhance your image. 
Then we have the structure AI where you can add a clarity, details, and really punch to your images. You can make it much more defined by increasing the volume or bringing down and adding glow and that kind of soft glow to your images. After that, we have the Relight AI, which allows you to relight your image using very smart technology where you can add more exposure to the foreground or the background of your image. Going forward, in the landscape tool, you can enhance the golden hour feel of your image. You can also enhance the foliage in your image. And additionally, with the third controller, you are able to add some fog to your image or you can apply some dehaze effect to your photo. Now let's reset everything, close the landscape tool and continue. Moving on, the next tool is the details tool where you can individually adjust the details in the small details, medium details and large details. And you can also add extra sharpening using the simple slider at the bottom of the tool here. Now the next tool are curves. Just like you know them, we have the traditional curves, red, green, and blue curves. And to use them, simply tap on the curve, which will add a new handle. And then you can very easily move it around. You can add another one and maybe create a little S curve just like that and use the curves to get even more control over your image. Once we close them, finally, we have the monochrome tool, which is quite specific what it does when you push the slider to different position, it will turn the image into black and white. And depending on the color you select, so let's say I'm going to select the red, it will take that specific color on the image and add a negative 50% on the luminance. So it will be darker. So when I start from here, you will see, for example, the back is red. So when I push the slider on the red, it will make the back darker. Similarly with the green, by pushing it on the green, it will make all the foliage darker. Let's just reset the slider. And that's it for the toolbar. So right now, develop tool, enhance AI, structure AI, relight AI, landscape, details, curves, and monochrome tools. But that's not it. Let's turn our attention towards the left side of our screen, where we have this little wheel. But before we continue, let's swap our image, and then we can turn our attention to the other two options available on our wheel. The first one is a sky replacement. So just turn the wheel or tap on the little cloud icon and that will bring and change the toolbar on the right side of the screen. Moving our attention to that, let's first start by the bottom part where you can see our sky library. There are different sky collections uh, with the skies that come with the application. However, when you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will find that you can also add your own skies. To do that, you just tap on this little icon with the plus sign on it, select the sky, and it will be added to the application. So the first thing you do, you select your sky. So let's select our own sky simply by tapping on it, and it will be replaced just like that. After that, we can turn our attention towards the upper part. That's where we have this little joystick. By moving it around, you can adjust the position of the sky. So for example, we can adjust it a little bit more towards left. So something like this to make it look like the sun rays are coming from behind the Eiffel Tower. Additional option here is the little circle with the arrows on it. And when you tap on it, you basically flip the sky horizontally. Once you adjust that, you can then slide with the controller, which will bring you to the next available option where you can adjust the mask of the sky. Looking at the image, it looks quite good. So we're not going to adjust it, but it's important for you to know that it's here. Finally, the third option, the first slider allows you to adjust the brightness of the sky. You can make it a little bit brighter or you can make it darker by sliding the controller. Again, double click on it, will reset it. With the second controller, you can adjust the white balance. You can make it a little bit warmer or a little cooler again by using the little slider. 
Finally, the third controller allows you to adjust the sharpness of the sky, which basically you can add a little bit of softness by sliding the controller up. Again, just like before, double tap on it to switch it off and that's it. Similarly to the tools in the tool panel, you have the on and off option in the top right corner. And when you tap on it, it switch off the specific tool. And first it gives you option to see the before and after for this specific adjustment, or you can basically switch it off and continue. Anyway, let's bring it on and continue. So this is the sky replacement path. But we have an additional option on our control wheel. So when we tap on it, it will open another option, which is called photography filters or photo filters. However, for the users of Luminar Neo, you will recognize this tool as it is very similar to Mood Tool. First, we have the controller on the top, which basically works just like the amount slider in the Mood Tool. By default, it's on 50 and you can basically turn it around all the way from 0 to 100%. Again, double tap will reset it and then we can look at the library of filters. Right now, the library come with two collections, portrait toning and also creative. To apply the filter, you just tap on it and just like that, it gets applied to your image. Again. Once you select the filter, you can increase the strength or bring it down by adjusting the controller. Let's have a look at a few more. Gloria, Sina, Venus, and so on. Let's have a look at some of the creative filters. Wooden, Involve, Red Trace, Grace. Now, Grace looks quite good if we increase the amount, maybe to something like this. And finally, one more thing I wanted to point out is that once you select the filter, you can tap on the little heart icon. And by doing that, you will place the filter into the favorites section, which will be placed on the top of your filters library. From here, you can quickly select it. And if you're not happy with it, if you want to remove it again, you tap the little heart icon and that's that. Finally, let's go back to the toolbar again. And let me highlight a few more options. First come first to zoom in, you just pinch in to the image. And to fit it back to the screen, you double tap on it. When you tap on the image and keep holding, you will also be able to see the before and after view. And just like before, to zoom in, you pinch in, to zoom out, you pinch out. And the very last thing I want to show you, when you make any adjustments, so for example, with the brightness, you will see the information panel appearing on the top of the screen, just like the exposure now. This is quite cool way to recognize what tool you're using and how much of the adjustment you apply. Finally, when you finish with the edit, you can just close everything. And just like I mentioned earlier, you tap on share and choose between share or save to photos. And with that, we are finished with today's video. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure that you give it a like. And if you have any question about Luminar for iPad or Luminar Neo, then write them into the comments under this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any of our future videos. For today, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I can't wait to see you next time.